Okay, so recently I finished doing the series on chemical weapons and how to protect yourself from them. So now it's time to start the biological weapons series and how to protect yourself from them. These aren't going to be in any particular order. I'm going to start almost alphabet alphabetically of anthrax today, but I might be doing these in any order. So, chemical weapons, as you know, are basically industrial chemicals for the most part that are weaponized. So when you inhale them or they touch your skin, they kill you or injure you. Biological weapons are basically naturally occurring um, sort of plants or whatever where the toxins are taken from them or their diseases, sort of bacteria, viruses that are weaponized so you infect people on purpose with them. So we're going to look at anthrax spores today uh, and the anthrax disease. So anthrax disease as far as I understand it is primarily a disease that affects cattle and livestock. So from what I understand you can get anthrax spores that naturally occur in soil and things like that. When cows and things eat them, they can then develop anthrax, um, which is obviously like a disease for them. As far as I'm aware, if you don't eat the meat from that cow, you can then get anthrax yourself. But the development was that anthrax has actually turned into a biological weapon by a lot of nations around the time of World War One and World War Two, um, throughout most of the Cold War until anthrax is eventually abandoned. Now, luckily, you can get an anthrax vaccine. That's normally given to soldiers because obviously you can protect them from it. But for a long time there wasn't a vaccine for anthrax so it was much more scary as a weapon and there was two ways anthrax was intended to be used you could release the spores against enemy soldiers and infect them with anthrax that way or the idea was which Britain had planned to do during World War II but never carried out was to basically try and infect enemy cattle or livestock with it so they can't eat it and you know it starts cutting off the enemy's food supply so the British idea was they made these things called anthrax cakes uh, which is a funny name for them but it was basically like um, something cows would eat and the idea was that uh, during World War II you'd have bombers drop these cakes all along the fields and if sheep and cows ate the cakes they'd then get anthrax um, which would either kill all the animals or um, you know kill the people or make the people ill who ate them. Um, as far as I'm aware from what I've read, anthrax can spread from person to person but that's not very likely. It's more if you come into contact with the spores it's very likely you'll get infected but it's hard to catch anthrax from one person to another. You know, it's possible, but it's you know you'd have to be very close to them for a very long period, exchanging bodily fluids, that sort of thing, to actually catch it. It's not something somebody can sneeze and give you anthrax or on public transport or something like that. So how anthrax infects you? There's several ways it can do it. You can either get it to touch your skin. If enough of the spores touch your skin, they can get into your skin. Um, that is apparently very obvious because it's where people have what's called anthrax sores or anthrax blisters where they have this dead looking skin so you know it's very obvious to other people that they've come into contact with anthrax from what I understand if you get anthrax on your skin it's the easiest way to treat it with antibiotics and everything else and it's the most obvious you've got it because you can see it from the outside of your body um, with anthrax uh, spores as well if you inhale or ingest them that's where you get real problems because if they've been inhaled or ingested they've either got into the inside of your lungs which is obviously much much worse or they are inside your gut and everything else um, so that's where they infect you from the inside out and that's where your survival chances are much lower again as far as I'm aware if you have an anthrax vaccine you're actually going to be protected pretty much from any of the forms of anthrax the fourth type isn't something that would really be used as a chemical weapon I think it was done more as a human experimentation thing anthrax would be injected with a syringe into people to see how long it took to kill them so anthrax going into the bloodstream Again, quite a nasty, horrible thing to do to your fellow man, but apparently that's been tested by various, you know, nations throughout history, what happens if you inject people with anthrax. So, as I was saying, the good news is nowadays that you can get anthrax vaccinations, a bit like you get a tetanus vaccination, whatever else. So, um, you know, you can be protected from anthrax that way. Obviously, regular NBC gear and masks will protect you. With a mask, you just need a P3 filter. Particulate filters block the spores from being inhaled. Um, and an NBC suit obviously touch it, stops the spores from touching your skin and getting into your skin. So anthrax is quite nasty stuff, but in sort of a doomsday device scenario, it seems to only be, you know, if you come into contact with the raw spores where you're in danger, it seems that, you know, it's not a disease that you can spread to a few people and then they'll spread it like wildfire, it doesn't really work like that. So I guess anthrax is very deadly if you're you know, in contact with the spores themselves, but not very deadly if somebody who's contacted the spores then walks past you. It's not one of those, it's not like a plague kind of, you know, pneumonic flu kind of um, disease where you'll be coughing and spluttering and spread it to people that way. 
Um, so from what I understand anthrax can be treated with antibiotics as long as you people know that you've inhaled it and get your antibiotics in time. Um, and obviously there are vaccines for it. You can also be protected from it from wearing protective clothing and masks. So anthrax is one of those things that's very scary if you go back before antibiotics were common and there wasn't the vaccinations. But now it's not such a scary thing in terms of, obviously you don't want to come into contact with it, but you know there's vaccinations, there's ways of treating it. Um, so anthrax is probably one of those biological weapons that terrorists might use, but it's not going to be like a state-sponsored WMD anymore. There's a few places in the world as well where they had to close off islands for ages because um, like, there was one near Scotland where the British Army used to test anthrax and they killed all the wildlife on the island with it. There's somewhere in Russia where they, for you know, years the Soviets kept dumping anthrax in this area. I don't know if it was to test how well it worked or just to get rid of it. They dumped it there. Um, what does make anthrax a bit more worrying though is the spores can apparently live for ages even if it's very cold or very hot climates. Um, so, you know, anthrax spores can sit around for a long time. So in theory it could be used as a weapon where somewhere would be dusted with anthrax spores and then left, you know, as like a biological minefield, I guess. But, yeah. Anthrax can you can protect yourself from anthrax with an NBC suit or any kind of you know impenetrable suit with a mask on with a P3 filter. That way you can't inhale it or get it onto your skin, and you can be vaccinated and given antibiotics against anthrax. So it's nowhere near as dangerous as it was, but it's still something to be aware of. So this is the first episode of biological weapons and how to protect yourself from it, and we've looked at anthrax. As I said, the rest of the series isn't going to be in alphabetical order. I'm just going to do it in whatever order I feel like. Uh, but there's some quite interesting things we'll learn about hopefully in this series.